All right, so welcome to the Fort Lorraine Museum. We're gonna take a walk through some of these buildings. We'll see what we can find out. I'm told there's a doll looking at me in that window. I'm told that all the buildings are open. Well, I want to start out with the fort. Apparently Fort Lorraine was built sort of it was a westernmost European settlement at one point and it sort of served as a fur trading post and kind of an offshoot to a further exploration west and they're busy restoring this so you can't go in all of it yet obviously the windows are modern but the fort itself is still open I remember, I was here when I was a kid. I remember that in these uh, corners, you could go in there and they had displays in there. There, uh, this looks like fresh concrete here, so they're redoing all this, so we all stay out of there. Kind of work in progress at the moment. Yeah, I think it'll look good when it's done. It's kind of a shame that's kind of in work in progress at the moment, but yeah, they're doing the same thing over here. I was just reading the sign there. This is a log house that was donated. It was built in uh, 1926. And then I guess somebody donated it and they put it here into the fort. This is not original with the fort, but they moved it here to serve as, uh, as the trading post for the fort. So this is not, I guess, original with how the fort was, but this is the general area where it was and they would have had something like this to conduct your fur trading. I think too, they have an outdoor oven here. I think on special events they will do like outdoor baking and stuff too. Trapper's cabin. Oh, I had to duck. Cool. It's like really, really low. <laughs> I like how they have the, the log just sticking through the wall on both ends, hang their furs on it. Get my glasses out of the way here. A cook stove in here, snowshoes. There's the bed. Pretty sure the fire extinguisher was just added later, but uh, yeah, it's neat. All the traps hanging here. Huh. Here's a house. We'll check it out if it's open. It says it was built in 1879, originally for a pioneer family of 12. Uh, I'll zoom out so you can see. This is not a gigantic house. There it is. All 12 of you. All 12 of you get in. Ceilings. Like it's right there. Right there. This one's a Hoori house. Actually, a little house, that Paul house there. Like, they must have been well off if they actually had stuff like that in their house, like a little piano and stuff like that. Very small, but probably at the time they were rich. This is 1890, so a little bit older yet. It was an upper class Victorian home. Parlor for entertaining, summer kitchen, and a small pantry. Open. Oh, we can go in there, maybe. Yes. All 
right. Well, the ceilings are a lot higher in here. Wood plank floors. You can tell this is like a major step up from that pole house as far as size goes. Like it's old, but like they have more than one room. The floors are like all over the map for rolling. Actually, this is a good sized kitchen. They have a sink. Look at that. Water. Ice box. It's like tiny because it's like up to my belly button. They also had an upstairs. Oh, can we go up here? Oh, we can go up here. Oh, this is tight. These stairs. Ow. Huh. Oh, these smokes. The floors are so uneven in here, I'm a little bit <laughs> catching myself stumbling. Oh, look, the stovepipe from the kitchen comes up through here. And probably that would, that's what heated up here. We'll go check out some of the uh, public buildings now. Ooh. Okay, um, here's some creepiness. I'm guessing what this is, is it's a casket for a child, because the size, and they have a viewing window here. So instead of opening up the whole lid, you just like move this small lid aside, and there's like, this is glass. The whole thing's not that big, so I'm guessing that's for a kid. This one just says professional building. Well, that's a picture of the museum before they expanded a bunch of stuff here. Quaint house, originally home. It's been converted to a doctor's office, dentist's office, law office to display the professional life. Okay. Oh, I see. So they just sort of mocked it up as a... Okay. Cheers. Oh, good bedpans. <laughs> what is this? Oh, this is the dentist chair. Oh, look, there's the drill. It's foot pedal powered. You pump the pedal, the wheel turns, and that's like turning this. The, that's the drill hanging on that cable. That's moderately terrifying. Can you imagine having a dentist where he's like working on your tooth and his foot's getting tired? <laughs> the drill's getting a little too, too slow. I don't know, there's some, there's some stuff in the museum that's kind of neat to see and then there's other stuff that's just like, maybe we shouldn't have saved any of that stuff. Maybe we should just forget that and move on. There's a barn. I don't know, maybe back then people just accepted it and it wasn't a big deal. There's like a multi-tool for you. Well, there's a little forge. Get the bellows there. And a grindstone. Oh, it works. Huh. We got some animal displays in here too. A whole bunch of birds. Tons of them. Hey, there's a beaver back there.
the bison. This is a York boat. Used by the Canadian Riverways from 18th to 20th century by the Hudson Bay Company traders and explorers. York boats could carry up to eight men. 13,000 pounds of cargo. Huh. Like they're pretty, pretty, pretty wide actually. Oh, okay, it's got a rudder. So it's not like a canoe, it actually has a rudder. Interesting. This is a different kind of church. I'll make my way over to that one. I guess they have two churches here. One thing to sort of mention as a side note for this museum, they put little picnic places kind of throughout. So, like behind a lot of the buildings, a lot of little picnic areas. So, I didn't ask if you could bring food, but I almost want to say that it looks like you could like bring yourself a lunch in here if you wanted to. Let's go check out the church. Huh. It was built in 1914 near Vita, Manitoba. A fire destroyed the original church in 37. It was rebuilt two years later. So this would be built in 39. Oh yeah, it's, it's not just a thing. It's like the actual roof line goes up to that dome too. It's not just an external feature. Oh, okay, I see. So you can go up those stairs. There's like more seating up in there. You're not, we're not allowed to go, but I guess there's seating up there too, so. Over here we have some rail cars. Canada Pacific Railway. This one's got a squirrel in the door. And he ran inside the car. Superintendent car and it's locked. And apparently it got squirrels. But I think this one, we can go in this one. Let's go in the car. Got the train horn for ambience. I might have to go around. Okay, so this first one is a caboose. That second car is behind it, but you can get to both of them from here. Three historically significant CPR cars. A caboose, a superintendent rail car, and the Van Horn rail car. The latter was used as a private business vehicle of the infamous CPR president, William Van Horn. Its location was unknown for decades until it was rediscovered in 1976 before being donated. So that's that one, uh, it's not the one of the squirrels. The squirrels are in the superintendent. They're in charge, I guess. Here's the caboose. Bed. Okay, and that's the little lookout hut. You can ride up there and look out the windows. So I guess from up there, you could like look down the whole row of train and you can see all the cars. Cause they used to man these things. Like this was the crew would stay in here. I don't know if they'd trade with the engineers in the engine or if they would just like be here for when they got to where they're going to hook up cars. I don't know. It's through here. Well, that's the end of the caboose. Okay, let's go to that car next. That's the Van Van Horn car. It's a lot bigger than the caboose. So here's how the workers live. Let's go see how the boss lived. Ah. There's a, okay, there's an actual private bathroom. This thing has two bathrooms. And then there's another seating area up here. Interesting. 
So it looked like he had a private bedroom with an ensuite. And then the back part almost looked like an office. There's a kitchen, and then there's a seating area up here. Huh. Okay. So this building is very long. It looks like we have military there, but here we have Manitoba Softball Hall of Fame. And it goes that way too. Huh. The military side, they got some uniforms too. A bunch of pins. There's a whole bunch of medals. They were all donated by somebody too, so these were like earned medals. These are not just like show pieces. I know that uh, at Southport, which was originally a military uh, airport, like a airbase. So I suspect they'll have some. Oh yeah, here we go. Fort Prairie was a major training area under the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan during World War II. So I imagine they're going to have a lot of air-related stuff. Yeah, it's a machine gun. There is more in here than you could... You'd have to really spend a lot of time if you wanted to... Uh, Really dig into it. There's a lot of stuff to read. I don't have time to cover it all. Is that like an actual cockpit seat? Made into a rocking chair? Yeah. Yes, it is. It's an ejection seat from a CF 101 Voodoo fighter jet. Now it's a rocking chair. Now this is a school. West Prospect School. Oh, okay. This is the foyer. Got the old sporting equipment, the old goalie pads, a bunch of skates. Oh, it's this way. We have a map. What is this? Not a map, I mean like it's an actual like uh, model. This looks like, oh, City of Portage Prairie, yeah. So, where are we? We'd be, we'd be, we'd be sort of right there. We're on the, this museum is on the east side of Portage. I believe this is the store. I think that's where you get your hair done. Yeah, because I got the sinks. Huh. The housewares on this side. Oh, that's the post office. Let's go to the post office. Ah! Telephone switch, yeah. Get the old phones, the old operator boards. Go back here. Telephone switchboard. Yeah, so you like and transfer your call, sir. Let's 
kind of amazing the things that they used to have to pay people to do like switching a phone signal You'd never think that that would be a job nowadays. Well, it isn't nowadays, but weird to think that once upon a time we didn't have a way of automating half the stuff we do now. I did not show it all, but I'm going to leave the video there. So that was a sort of a, a look at the Fort Lorraine Museum in Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. Uh, it's it's open sort of just during the warm season, so I think from early May until uh, probably September, October, sometime in there. You can find their info online if you search for Fort Lorraine Museum. But uh, yeah, there's there's a lot more stuff than what I showed, but uh, I have another video that I'm going to put out or that is already out showing the Alice Chalmers and Gleaner stuff that's on the other half of the museum. And I kind of have a, have a separate video just looking at the farm machinery type stuff there. But uh, this video was just sort of the buildings and all the, the other museum pieces that are all around the property. So if you like this video, uh, you can check out the Alice Chalmers one if you want to see the other half of the museum. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.